and welcome back my peeps what a freaking crazy week in the world again it's even more crazy to think a year ago i called it on my youtube channel saying by spring 2020 i need to be living the van life but that's not what we're here to talk about and you know that already if you are new here my name is jeff dares this channel's dares drives and we are currently converting a 2019 mercedes sprinter van into a 4x4 overland roaming home which we're going to travel the continent with but what i'm trying to do is make bite-sized type videos onto each project we're doing so it breaks it out nice and easy for you so if you're looking to do a build so our goal this week is to get our hydronic heating system pre-wired so we don't have any wires exposed once the build is completely done we got this from a company called Rickson Enterprises this is the kit I've got it laid out behind me here we'll get more into detail for it now these guys make these kits for RVs and vans in which create an option to have hot water and hot air off one unit and it runs off the diesel that the van already runs off of itself eliminating the need for propane completely inside of our van and that was an important step for me now i must admit i did not come up with this idea all by myself i actually found it on a youtube video in which a couple by the name of snow and kurt made a recirculating shower using this same type of kit but because we want to have a four season van a recirculating shower requires way too many pieces to be down underneath the van, which completely eliminates the four season van thing. But I still wanted the same heating system, again, to eliminate that propane. So I will tag the video right up here of Snow and Kurt and their recirculating shower, because it is pretty cool, you might want to check it out. But I just want to share that piece of information. So without getting into too many details about the furnace itself, because that'll come when we're actually putting the furnace in the van, We'll actually show you exactly how it works and what it's all about this video again i want to keep them bite size so we're just going to talk about the pre-wiring that needs to be done now before we put walls up inside that van so we have these three pieces which is our wi-fi connection our main control panel with all our switches and our thermostat now those three pieces are going to sit up here just like this control board is in our control tower where all of our electronics are all going to go but they have to wire all the way down this way to that spot right there and hook into these pieces here which is our expansion tank our actual s-bar heater system itself our fan and our pump using this wiring harness that they've given us and once we had it all laid out on our 4 by 8 sheet i just started taking the wiring harness and finding where each plug goes into the heater, into the fans, and, and all makes it back to the control panel themselves. So after hours of me chasing wires, I was able to figure out that that plugs into the S-bar. This and this go to our fuel pump itself, like that, okay? Then we were left with this wire here outside of the wire and harness, which matches the plug on our Wi-Fi connector. Unfortunately, so this Wi-Fi reader here is what I'm talking about. Now on the actual instructions itself, it does show this plastic clip that comes off of it that's gonna plug into the wiring harness. It shows the red wire, which is supposed to go into the control panel itself. And then it shows a green wire that just says it's not in use at all, which mine has all those pieces. But mine has an extra yellow wire. And this yellow wire is not listed on our wiring diagram, so it caused us another delay. Again, part issues. <laughs> This is the hardest part of the build. I'm telling you, my friends, the hardest part. So I made a phone call, talked to them. Yes, this is the older model. Mine is an updated version of this. They call it version 3.2. <laughs> and they're sending me a new Wi-Fi module. So now that I got that figured out, I can still run my wires, but I need to let you guys know what just happened to us because, well, you guys know that wrong parts and part delays have been the Achilles heel of the whole build. We all know this. So anyways, now that we know how the harness plugs into the furnace and the fuel pump and up into the Wi-Fi router that we know of, now we gotta take our fan and our pump because they run wires directly to the panel but don't actually go to the wiring harness. So the first wire we're gonna run with is the fan. We're gonna use some 16 gauge wire that looks like this and I'm just gonna run it from the front of the van all the way across to the back of the van ensuring I leave quite a bit of extra length on the wire itself and we know we're gonna have enough wire to hook up to that fan and then we label 
the back side of that wire, fur fan, and the front side of that wire as fur fan, obviously standing for furnace fan. So that means our furnace fan has now been pre-wired and I'm gonna put it away back into its box. Now the next what we're gonna do right here is the pump. So when I look at the pump itself, it's got fatter wire than 16 gauge on it itself. It actually more lines up with our 12 gauge wire. So for this one, I've taken some of our 12 gauge wire this time, which I've labeled both ends, fur pump, and we're just gonna run it just the same as we did the last one. Pretty simple stuff. That now eliminates the pump from our schematic. We know we have power going to it, so it can go back in the box. And that leaves us on this side, this comfort hot expansion tank. So on the instructions we're working with the wiring, that's not even labeled here. I had to go into the website to find this, but it's pretty straightforward. It doesn't even plug into the control or nothing. It literally just has a 120 volt wire going into it, which I've already run right here back when we did our 120 volt and named it fur tank. And this will actually run off of a breaker type switch so I can turn it on and off when needed. And that now eliminates the tank from our process. So once again, I'm just gonna pull it off our board so it's out of our way. So looking at our instructions, I now have the water pump run. I now have the fans run. And again, that tank is not listed on this part itself, but I know we have it all run already. So next is getting this Wi-Fi code reader figured out. Now we are gonna have this sitting right beside the control manual. So the red wire coming off, it's gonna be right beside it, no need to run it. But this wire here, as we see, has a clip and it does need to run all the way down to the harness into our S3 S bar heater. So the wire it comes with is this right here. Now this part plugs in to the Wi-Fi connector. This is our red wire that runs straight to our control port. And this yellow wire as mentioned before, that's a wrong piece because we're getting a new Wi-Fi connector coming in. But I can't let that hold us up. So I'm gonna take this piece here and I'm gonna run this all the way from the front to the back just like everything else. Now we are gonna make sure our clip end is the end that we have sitting here. Now this wire does come with this gray clip for that final end after we've run it through the looming and all that. And it actually plugs into our wiring harness right here. So I'm not actually gonna hook it up yet. I'm just gonna leave this separate for now. And we'll come back to that when we're actually hooking up the whole furnace itself, which is a ways down the road. So if you wanna see that part, maybe hit that subscribe button and we'll get there, I promise. But I can now take our Wi-Fi connector, put it back into our box and tuck it away nice and safe. So now we're left looking like that. Slowly but surely, it's starting to feel a little more manageable. As you can see here, we just hooked up number four, which is our Wi-Fi code reader which bridges to number five. So we're left with our ground and power, which we don't have to run wires because that's all right here. And our power is right at that front area too. This item here, the thermostat, already has its wires on it. Red, yellow, black, which plug straight into the back of this. So this, we don't have to worry about running any wires. So I'm gonna put that one away as well. So we need to look at our furnace start, which is this yellow wire right here. So as you can see, it comes off here, it has a black and a red wire that are not used, and we splice off the yellow to go all the way up. So looking at our wiring harness, if I go to this wire right here, and we split the sheathing off of it, you will see that in behind it is a yellow, black, and red wire, just like the instructions showed. Now, I probably could unravel this and run that all the way up, but something about having that whole wiring harness in the van already before we put walls and everything and having those plastic plugs lying around, I don't like that idea. So I'm gonna take more of our 16 gauge cable and we'll label it fur start and we'll just run this just like everything else we did. And with that being completed, our furnace start switch, our yellow wire is now run. And I did label this wire fur start as well to match the wire inside the van just for easy matching when it comes time a couple weeks down the road, when we put this in, there's gonna be no questions asked. We know exactly where that goes. So now we're left with these two, which we run once we're putting this in, and our stat return and stat power, which is this here, we run once it's all put in. And that is now all of our wires for our control panel. So I'm gonna put this away now, and we're left with one more exposed wire, which shows up right here on our wiring schematic as the ground, and the main power 12 volt that has to run to a 20 amp inline fuse directly from the batteries. 
So for that, if we think 20 amps, if we pull our, our wiring chart back up like we used last week, to go from here up across and back down all the way to where the batteries are gonna go, that's well over 20 feet, which means we'd have to be up to like an eight gauge wire to be able to do that. So what I've decided to do is I'm gonna stick with 12 gauge. We're gonna keep our wire 10 feet and under for a critical asset, which this would be considered. So what we've done is we've taken our 12 gauge cable in 10 foot and we pre-wrapped it in our looming and I'm just gonna run it along the bottom side this time all the way up to the front where our batteries are. And there she is. Fur power, all the way down through, through this little groove here, all the way across, and out to where the batteries are gonna go. And then we'll label this wire that's on the wiring harness, fur power to match those. Everything now is labeled. Fur Wi-Fi, fuel pump, fuel pump, and the first start. And you can see from inside the van that all the wires are loomed and rolled up nice and clean and labeled, ready to be plugged into that wire and harness, literally plug and play. Once we have walls and everything inside that vent. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all this tape that we spoke about in last week's video, and I'm gonna use it to tape up all our wires and clean up this disaster of a mess we have. So I'm gonna take all our 12 volt wires and our camera wires, and I'm gonna attach all them together with the tape, and I'll take the 120 volt wires and do the same, just taping them together separately from the 12 volt wires. Until it all looks like this. See, look how clean this is now. So the wires are gonna be up underneath the roof, are all secured nice and tight up to the roof. These are all taped in. I did leave them a little bit loose because the wall panels and the roof need to slide in behind them. Have to tune in next week to see that. We did it all the way to the front and all the way across. Done and done, my friends. That is the end of wires. After three weeks, we're done with wires. It's time to start making this thing actually look like a camper van with some walls. So, if you've watched this long and you kind of liked what you saw, and if you haven't subscribed yet, maybe hit that button. No pressure, of course, you do you, but it is completely free. It does mean the world to me. If you have subscribed, thank you, thank you, thank you. And as always, we, we will see you next Sunday. Perfect.